Now in this next case, we're going to use the sagittal series again, the so-called MLO CC view technique using dynamic contrast enhanced MRI to solve a problem. But this time we're actually going to take you through a standard approach and dictation. This patient is 50 years old. She has an abnormal mammogram and ultrasound. She has no discrete palpable abnormality and reported was an abnormality approximately three centimeters in the 12 o'clock position in the right breast. The lesion was taller than it was wider and another lesion seen at 8 o'clock in the right breast midway to the nipple was hypoechoic but indeterminate sonographically. So MR is going to be used as a problem solver in this case and to alleviate or prevent an unnecessary biopsy. There were also comparison mammograms and ultrasounds from 4413 and multiple mammograms were reviewed by this reader from 313, 212 and 1110. So we're taking the entire study together with multiple modalities using MRI as the ultimate problem solver if we can. We begin with our axial non-contrast T1 appearing gradient echo also known as the non-coherent gradient echo or spoiled gradient echo or fast field echo some people refer to it as the FISP type sequence. The fat is white, the parenchyma is gray, there are no gross nodular masses or areas of asymmetry or mass effect. We would look at this study in the same manner that we'd look at a mammogram looking for architectural distortion mass or mass effect. This T2 weighted image looks like it was obtained as an afterthought. It was only obtained on the patient's left side which was not the side where suspicious abnormalities were found but it does illustrate one problematic issue with breast MR and that is breathing motion. This ghosting phenomenon that one sees above the breast is related to the expansion of the thorax and the expansion of the breast within the coil. This ghosting is most severe wherever phase encoding has occurred and that usually occurs in the Y or phase encoded direction but also in the slice selection direction. This can be minimized by slightly packing the breast or padding the breast in a coil which can be easily done with a piece of foam that you buy at a hardware store. You can also instruct the patient to breathe a little less deeply and a little more rhythmatically. Let's move on to the next sequence which is the dynamic sagittal series beginning with the non-contrast portion. These first images were obtained before the injection was made and then the injector fires. And we have a series of dynamic sequences at approximately a minute and a half, then at three minutes, then at four and a half, then at six. So we have four data points from one and a half to six minutes. The first three wash in, the last three wash out. Let's go to the breast of interest, namely the right breast, and we'll focus on the first minute and a half where 90% of all invasive cancers will rear their ugly head as an area of hypervascularity that is almost as intense as the enhancing heart. And it's here that we stake our claim. Now this image which utilizes fat suppression is not yet subtracted. So we're primarily looking at enhancing morphologic masses. Many of you have focused on this lesion right here, which when magnified shows the sparse, fatty, parenchymal, glandular, lacy interface 
of a normal gland island. When we look at it on our non-subtracted image, it doesn't have mass effect. In fact, it's moving none of the adjacent structures out of the way. It has a perfectly linear inferior edge with a black line, which is an artifact known as chemical shift artifact. But that's not why we're discussing the case right now. That very linear interface would be most atypical for a tumor. But it's the non-contrast image that tells you you are not dealing with a lobular carcinoma. But we're not done yet. Let's continue scrolling the group of sequences, keeping our focus on the right breast, which was the abnormal breast sonographically. And if we just take one or two areas, like this area, and the, the inferior aspect of the right breast, this area, they're not really changing from one dynamic image to the next. In other words, there may be a little contrast inside, but then the contrast basically lays there. It doesn't wash out. It doesn't diminish. The edges of the lesion remain very firm and tight, which is typical of a benign, non-aggressive lesion. Nor does the lesion become very hyper-intense. Now that we have reviewed the contrast enhanced non subtracted fat suppressed series. Let's go to the subtracted series. Now, one can see that there's a little bit of motion, some very subtle parallel lines that are present. And these parallel lines are a product of the slight movement between the initial non contrast and the contrast dynamic that produces a little bit of mismapping on subtraction, which can be corrected up to about three pixels with your CAD. That being said, the subtraction is still effective. Let's go to our first subtraction so that you can see where you are. You're in the left breast. This is left. This is right. The patient's prone. Cardiac apex points to the left side. Let's go to the right side and specifically pay careful attention to this parenchymal island. Very scant enhancement and in fact you can see septa going right through it, undisturbed and unperturbed. The fat doesn't enhance, going right through it, undisturbed and unperturbed. Let's keep looking, even though we have a little bit of motion. There's some very scant irregular enhancement towards the back of the left breast. Let's take a look at that. It's this tissue right here. Notice I'm toggling back and forth between the morphologic T1 appearing image and the dynamic image. I'm confident that what I'm looking at is the lacy longitudinal appearance of fat laden parenchyma. I'm not worried about it in the least. Let's go back to our, our right side. And again our lesion at the bottom maybe accumulates a little more contrast but still not very much. Let's do it again. A few scattered nodular areas of enhancement that are well under three or four millimeters, which we're going to use as our cutoff for a lesion that we might pursue or chase. And on the opposite side, nothing remotely corresponding to the described abnormalities on ultrasound, which most likely represented some of these parenchymal islands that we see, like this one in the inferior breast on the right side. And let's take one more pass through. And once again, our lesion inferiorly is really a pseudo lesion. It's nothing more than breast parenchyma, showing full well the interior of it, but perhaps best seen and best confirmed on the 
T1 appearing image. And there are other similar looking areas that could appear slightly scary on the contrast enhanced portion of the study, like this island of glandular tissue. So now let's look at our MIP, our maximum intensity projection image, which is simply a thresholded image looking for highly enhancing areas which are almost all related to the blood vessels. Yes, the breast has this busy appearance which we see in patients that will have a little bit of adenosis. Sometimes you'll see this in fibrocystic breast change, especially if it's adenosis or proliferative dominant. But there are no spiculated, early, dynamic, enhancing masses. So now let's talk about the, the dictation of this case. Here's how I would begin. First, I would focus in on the non-breast findings and I would say, in capitals, non-breast findings. Number one, no abnormalities in the sternum or adjacent ribs or anterior lung fields are noted. Number two, no other incidental abnormalities are identified. Next, in capitals, right breast. The described lesions sonographically of X size, X length, and X width in X quadrant have no corresponding MR hypervascular mass identified. Number next, the nipple, chest wall, axilla, and adjacent soft tissues are normal. Number next, no adenopathy is appreciated. Number next. Slight increased enhancement in the breast without corresponding dominant lesion is most compatible with adenosis. Next, left breast in capitals. Number one, the nipple, chest wall, axilla, and adjacent soft tissues are normal. Number two, no hypervascular neoplasm is identified. Number three, adenosis type diffuse pattern of enhancement is present. Conclusion, BIRADS2 appearance consistent with adenosis but no dominant hypervascular mass correlating with the sonographic abnormality is identified, period. Perhaps multiple isolated gland islands in an involuting breast may account for these areas of altered echogenicity. End. Now let's move on and look at an axial dynamic with a cancer. And you'll see the dramatic difference in enhancement. 